Okay guys, the wind is uh, starting to blow a bit and damaging the tracks, you know, wearing them away. Uh, but we're going to try and see, you know, follow the tracks a bit, see if we can maybe pick up where this leopard went. Uh, we don't want to go into a surprise corner, you know, like corner the leopard. And uh, cause yeah, we are right next to this drainage line. Some nice thick vegetation, nice place for the leopard to hide away in. Uh, but we also don't want to go and look for trouble. But let's just get an idea in which direction this leopard went. It's always nice, you know, uh, most of the time, you know, when we're out in the bush, either walk with a rifle um, or even a stick. It's always nice to just keep, you know, keep your line, keep the tracks. Um, if you do lose the tracks, um, there's lots of things that you will look at, either aerial tracking, um, what we call it, you know, in the grasses, how the grasses turned over, or leaves of bushes and so on turned over. If you sometimes lose tracks, you have to sometimes do what we call a 360. Um, and then we you do a long loop in order to try, not necessarily a long loop, but depends on the if it's rocky terrain or whatever, just to do a bit of a loop to try and pick up the tracks on the other side of the rocks or so again. Sometimes just small little things like pebbles that turned over, there's lots of things that we look at, but let's try and see more or less where this leopard went. Every year in there, he goes into the grasses, comes back to the path, so not we're not the whole time on the tracks, but sometimes we just, you know, bypass some obstacles and we try and get back onto the tracks. Unfortunately, some humans walked here and already, you know, damaging his tracks. But yeah, you can see there's the leopard again. You can't see it very clearly. That's why I'm saying, you know, sometimes we just look for small little marks. But this is part of the back part of the, the, the leopard's track. And he continued walking here. Um, so let's just see. Here we go. Here he stepped in softer soil again in the shadow, unfortunately. We can't see nicely. Um, then, yeah, he stopped he carried on walking again there we go okay it's just if you especially if you if you're walking you know you're really in a hurry to try and in this case we constantly have to stop to just see if we can see the tracks clearly but um if we really track animals and we're on a mission to track the animal it's better to always you know not look at your feet and look at tracks but always look at these at a distance of about five meters ahead of you when you track an animal always nice if you can which is always brilliant is to try and you know if we have the animal walking in the direction of the sun it creates more of that reflection to keep tracks between you and the sun and that always makes it easier to actually follow the tracks sometimes having the sun behind you following an animal is not always easy so it's always nice especially when the sun is at a low level keeping giving that bit of a reflection when you follow the, the animal's tracks um you know, if the sun is hard, the bees are straight onto the tracks, and the tracks also don't stand out that much. But let's see. Yeah, the leopard continued. There's also another nice track over there. It's front foot, back foot. I want to get an idea of where the leopard went. So, guys, we're not going to stop the whole time. Get a nice idea of where it went. Fortunately, as I mentioned, a lot of human activity in stepping over the tracks, but there we go. Not very nice markings. Um, but uh, there's the leopard's tracks one, two, three, four toes. Back part of the tracks, this was the back foot. Um, and then, yeah, continue. It looks like a, also a beetle. That crossed after the leopard came through here. If I look at the tracks, unfortunately, unfortunately it's a bit of a shuddering effect here. But if I look at the marks here and the way this beetle was walking, actually came from this side, walking this way, it was uh, looks like a tenebroited beetle, um, also known as a tok toki, walking this way. But unfortunately, with the shuddering effect here, it doesn't show very nicely. Here the leopard stopped again. He stopped and he turned. You can see the soil. And just for interest, guys, you can't see the whole track here, but look at this. I don't know if you can focus very nicely because of the shadow here. This is back, the part of the back of the track and then the toes over here. But you can see here, it's either something might have moved in the grass and he immediately it caught his attention and he looked up. And with that, he slightly turned his foot. 
and you can see even here you see here if you look very carefully you can see the hair finer hair marks as he turned basically what he did is he did this as he looked that way so he just turned his foot and that's why you can see these marks and there's a bit of a you can see the swirl also you know you're in the back part of the track and then from there you got a bit of a fright not a fright necessarily but just probably maybe like a franklin or something or just something moving in the grass as i mean it was early morning so it's difficult to say what it was he just heard something in the grass in the bushes and then he stopped looked in that direction and then eventually it looks like he continued again but uh, i just want to make that sure okay guys so I mentioned conditions are becoming more difficult because of human tracks that walked here early this morning. Um, it, it makes it really difficult. Um, sometimes I've mentioned we have to skip a, you know, some distance. You know, especially with tracking, if you really um, use the behavior of animals, you know an area also quite well. Let's say, for example, it's in the dry months. Um, you sometimes know certain game paths lead towards a water hole then you can even take shortcuts let's say you're following lion tracks and you see it's moving in the in the direction of a water hole you can actually take a shortcut and basically even sometimes if you're lucky ambush the lion there but it's always better to stay on the tracks because you never know the animal could have easily uh, changed his mind but yeah that all comes you know with skill uh, many years of experience then you can actually um look at those kinds of things but yeah the leopard continued here yeah, as i mentioned not everywhere tracks showing nicely um just every here and there yeah you can hardly see the tracks every here and there i'm just looking at small little things uh markings of the leopard if i see a nice example i'll point it out to you unfortunately it's a bit you know, a lot of shadow here so the tracks don't really stand up there you can see a light mark of the leopard walking um so they continuous every here and there also the soil is quite hard um as i mentioned now we're concentrating on the tracks because we want to know where this leopard went so that is why i'm not you know literally following the animal of, of, and walking a bit faster and keeping the distance as i've mentioned between myself and the track but even here if you stay right here just to give you an idea of what i'm talking about um if you look in the distance you can see over here there's some marks again you see these marks here if you stay right there you can see these marks here this is the two of the leopard's toes. Okay, so you can see from an angle, you can see the, see the reflection much better because of the sun. It's not that high yet, but at least the sun is a very now advantage, so it helps. So you can see the marks here of the leopard, but not the full track. But if you now come closer, you can still see the track, but I'm just giving an idea. It's always better to try and keep the tracks in the distance, especially if you, you're walking after the tracks and you want to track the animal. Okay, so... Yeah, it crossed the road, so um, the, the terrain much more difficult. You can see a lot of gravel here. There's a few vehicles that are already passed here. We don't know which direction he went. So this is where tracking becomes difficult. Where you have to sometimes now look at a pebble. Let's say for example, just an example. Here we have a rock. Now the pebble or the rock turned over like this you can see the soil clinging onto the rock at the bottom i'm just giving an example so these are the kinds of things that we have to look at and these are the difficult conditions and this is a typical environment when you struggle to pick up tracks where you do what we call a 360 on the other side of the road for example go all the way around to try and see if you can maybe pick up tracks all the way around of course it definitely came down here but i'd also like to mention it was easy for this leopard to have maybe been walking on the road as much as energy expenditure walking or running on the road in many cases with animals the same with us humans so he could have easily walked down the road and that will mean basically that we will not see the tracks unless we maybe walk much further down the road and maybe hopefully pick up tracks again but as i mentioned cars driving here most of the tracks are damaged so let's see okay Right guys, so as I mentioned, conditions now much more difficult here with the gravel, the road. Um, in the meantime, um, what I've quickly done is just to, to get a nice overview, scan the area a bit, and you know, at least with the sun, that's still a bit of a reflection. Only pick up one light marking from this distance, so it come closer. Because of the cars and so driving through, you don't see any trucks. You see maybe some antelopes, there's a little daika that came through here. There's also some, some kudu that came down by these trucks from last night's kudu trucks. Um, kudu going down that way. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of animal activity around here. But the only nice trucks, or not nice trucks, but the trucks I can still 
see from a distance over here is the tracks over here. You can see just a light markings of two of the leopards toes and back part of the track and the leopard actually went in here over very hard terrain into the thickets. So let's just follow the track a little bit further. Definitely going in here. Probably some in this it makes a nice drainage and now the thing is with leopards they like to stay undetected they don't like to be seen and that is why always the best it doesn't mean that you don't find leopards anywhere else in in, in the places you know but leopards or anywhere in the bush you can find leopards they, they can adapt to all environments just to get back to the, the main point but the thing is the best places to find leopards when you even when you go for a game drive or something is to especially stick to riverine roads um, let's say you're going into the Kruger National Park, riverine roads, you have large big trees, um, thick bush, thick vegetation, leopards as I mentioned earlier on, they like to stay undetected, they don't, don't like to be seen, so they, 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 they main prey species, hands are close to the river like ipara, bushbuck, baboons, so nice big trees for storing their prey in. Nice cover to stay undetected for their prey as well. Um, so yeah, perfect conditions for leopard to hang out in. And here we have this drainage line, nice thick bush. I'm talking a bit loud now because we know the leopard went in here, but we're not going to follow it all the way. We're going to go a bit further up. It looks like he walked here on this path and probably circle back into the stream. Maybe had some nice meat, you know, that he could smell up here like maybe some uh, nice herd of impalas um but yeah definitely the leopard came through here unfortunately you don't see the tracks nice here yeah so because of the grasses and so but every here and there as i've mentioned just looking at light markings but it came through here and walk all the way here there we go it's just unfortunately some a bit of a, sh a shadow here can't see the tracks nicely but there's the leopard tracks you know, small little things that we look at and remember, tracking comes over years and years of doing this and practicing it. And it's one of, one of my favorite things in the bush, is tracking. Okay, so love tracking, love tracking of the animals. You know, always the, the nice part is when you find the animal, that's always the best part. In this particular case, guys, as you can see, if you look further up, the bush is getting nice and thick. Okay. Don't have any safety equipment with us, only a stick. Okay. okay. And also don't have claws and teeth like a leopard, so we can't fight back. Um, so for safety, bush is thick. We also don't want to disturb the animal. We know it's somewhere in here in these thickets. Probably laying around, just hiding away in the thickets for the day. But it's definitely in here. But with the so going to the side. In this case, that we're not going to go after this leopard, okay? Due to the fact safety is the most important. Secondly, you don't want to go and disturb the animal and look for trouble for the wrong reasons. Okay. Right, guys, just for interest, that side is the Kruger National Park. Um, that's where we've done many, many, many walks over many years and uh, home uh, for many years. Now this side is Mud of Park. A uh, few people have houses here and lodges here and people can move freely around. Um, so that's the tracks where we showed you earlier on where the leopard came in was from the Kruger National Park and came into Mud of Park. So yes, you still find a lot of leopard lion activity around Marloff Park and not just here, all along the Kruger National Park you must remember it's the Kruger Park, it's wilderness and yes, the animals come out and they go back to the Kruger Park again it's been like that for many 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 years okay, so um, you mustn't get surprised if you if you hear of a story of a leopard or a lion that was seen outside the park it is normal behavior there's territorial overlaps they drive each other sometimes the one animal gets pushed out sometimes just the animals explore sometimes yes we've had it a few times when we were still based at crocodile beach in the kruger national park constantly there was a pride of lions called the Vurami pride they constantly went out and actually had their babies in some nice thickets on the other side of the river on the other side of the fence um, it happens um, it's nature it's wonderful to be here it's a blessing